The topic of death is something that comes to the forefront of our minds at particular times in our lives. Uh, but most of the time we try not to think about death. And the fact is every single one of us is going to face death. And I want to talk a little bit about that in this video. I don't know if you realise this, that the Bible teaches that by his death, Jesus has given every single person on planet Earth the opportunity to be free from the fear of death. And in the Bible, in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 to 15, it says this, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. You know, the victory over death that the Bible talks about is so emphatic that it says in 1 Corinthians 15, 55, where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? So the Bible teaches that death has lost its sting. But what does that mean for us? The first step to being free from the fear of physical death is to understand spiritual death. I'm going to get to spiritual death in a minute, but before we get there, I just want to talk about the basics of what the Bible teaches about death. You see, in 1 Corinthians 15, 56, it says this, The sting of death is sin. I don't know if you've ever understood that, but death only has to be a really terrible thing if sin has not been dealt with in the life of the person who dies. When I was 21 years old, I remember driving home through the English countryside from a wedding. And as I was driving home, I could see that some of my close friends had been trying to get in contact with me, uh, but I wasn't able to receive their calls because the signal was not good enough. And when I got home, I realized something really serious had happened because there was an atmosphere in my house and I remember going up to my brother and saying, Johnny, what's happened? And I remember my brother looked at me and he said to me, it's Joe, Joe has died. Joe was my best friend and he was a similar age to me and what had happened was he had gone hiking in Scotland and he had fallen a long distance and they think that he had hit his head on the way down and he had died before he'd hit the ground. And as I received that news, I just began to cry. I burst out into tears and I cried and I cried. And after a few minutes, I needed to go to the bathroom and I walked into the bathroom and I closed the door behind me. And I remember closing my eyes and saying, God, what has happened? And I felt God speak three words into my heart. And these were the words, he's with me. And all I can say in that moment was that uh, death lost its sting in that moment. Was I still sad that I'd lost my best friend? Absolutely. Did I still have a lot of grieving to do? Oh yes, I remember crying uh, as I lay in bed at night for many days after that, grieving the loss of my best friend. But somehow death had lost its sting because I knew where Joe was. You see, Joe had given his life to Jesus. Joe had a living relationship with God. He understood that Jesus had died on the cross for his sin. And he'd asked God to forgive him of his sin. And he was living a life for Jesus, not for himself. Of course, we still miss the person once they've gone to be with God. But the Bible says in Psalm 116, 15, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. Now, the only way we can have a revelation that physical death has lost its sting and actually death is precious is if we understand spiritual death. So I want to talk about two aspects of spiritual death. 
The first one is that the Bible teaches that before a person comes to Jesus, they are already dead in their sins. In Colossians 2.13, it says, When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive in Christ. So without God, without what Jesus has done on the cross for us, we humans are not just bad, we're dead. Jesus didn't just come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people alive. And we're all born into sin, and therefore we're all born spiritually dead. Spiritually dead just means disconnected from God, who is the life source. But he can make us alive if we give ourselves to him. In John 17, 3, it says, Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. So eternal life is not just something that happens when we get to heaven. Eternal life starts now. Eternal life means to know him, to enter into a real and living relationship with the God who made you. And it never ends. It doesn't end at the point that you die physically. That's why it's called eternal life. So if you think about this, spiritually, a follower of Jesus will be more alive in their physical death than they ever were before they came to Christ. Now, the second thing I want to say about spiritual death is that scripture tells us that we need to let go of our lives anyway. So it says that we should put to death our old life and its desires. And Jesus said in Matthew 16, 25, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. So what Jesus is actually saying is the time to die is now. Let your old life die so that you can take on the new life that I want to give you. So I've got a question for you as you watch this video. Have you already died? Have you let go of your natural life and all its cravings? You see, this is actually what baptism is about. If you think about it, a person goes under the water and that's to signify that they've made the decision to let go of their old lives, to die to their old life. And as they go through the water, that's a picture of that person receiving a washing, the cleansing of the forgiveness of sins because Jesus died on the cross in their place and they're accepting that free gift for him. And then when the person comes up out of the water, it signifies the new life that they are starting. And of course, Jesus said that you cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you're born again. And just like a, a baby comes out of its mother's womb, uh, out of the water, uh, as a person gets baptised, they come out of the water and it signifies that they are being born again into a new life in Jesus. And so baptism is about dying with him and letting go of your old life. And that's why the Apostle Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. That's Galatians 2 verse 20. In another one of my videos, I share my story and I share how I gave my life to Jesus. And I know that on that day, about 15 years ago, that was the day that David Steele died. And that was the day that I took on the new life that Jesus wanted to give me. And I've never been the same since that day. So I'm here to tell you that if you want that life that Jesus won for you on the cross, if you want eternal life, it doesn't matter what country you come from. It doesn't matter what family you come from. It doesn't matter what your religious background is. This gift is available to every single person on planet Earth. And I want to tell you how to receive it. You see, there are two things that you need to receive this gift. The first one is faith. And that means that we believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And that we believe that he rose again 
from the dead so that we can have a new life. And the second thing is repentance. Repentance is where we have a, a change of mind that leads to a change of actions. It basically means a 180 degree turn in our lives. We were following our natural desires and our flesh and the things that we desire and we turn and we follow after Jesus. And Jesus said, come, follow me. And we find out what he wants us to do with our lives and we live life his way. So those two things, faith, and repentance. So I'm going to pray now and if you want to join me in this prayer to receive eternal life and to be set free from the fear of death then please do join me. Father I just want to thank you so much that your word says that you so loved the world that you sent your son to die for us so that we will not die but have eternal life. And we just want to come before you now and we want to receive that. We want to say sorry for our sin. We want to say sorry for all the things in our lives that we've done, the things we've said, the things that we've thought about that have displeased you. And we want to thank you right now that when you, Jesus, died on the cross, you didn't have any sin of your own, but you took our sin to the grave. And we want to thank you that you made it possible for us to be forgiven. So we receive that forgiveness right now. And Lord, we just want to say that we want to start a new life with you. We want to turn from our old life. And you can just say it between you and God. God, I want to turn from my old life and I want to take on your new life. Would you be my saviour? Would you be my Lord? And would you lead me into the things that you've called me to do? In Jesus' name. And I just want to say that, uh, you know, some people for many years don't understand that they were born spiritually dead. And what happens is that they pray and they feel like their prayers are hitting a brick wall. And once you become born again, uh, the connection with God is re-established. That's what eternal life is, to know him. And I just want to encourage you to pray and to talk to him, share with him the things that are on your heart. If it's important to you, it's important to him. And ask him to lead you and ask him to uh, give you other Christians, put other Christians around you that can help you and teach you what it means to, to live the Christian life. And, you know, we started this video talking about death, but actually Jesus came talking about life. And he said, I have come to give them life and life in all its fullness. And my prayer is that you will experience that life, that you'll be free from the fear of death. And you'll know that when your physical death comes, you'll have such a close relationship with him that you'll know that death is going to be the moment that you meet with him. And not only will it be precious to God, but it will be the most wonderful thing for you also.